Hi guys, it's Dr. Paul. Welcome to the first episode of Fit Tips. Yes. As promised, this video marks the beginning of a series that's dedicated to helping you achieve your best possible body and optimize your physical health. Whether you need to lose weight, firm, tone, improve your cardiovascular health, increase your endurance, or a combination of all of the above, you will find lots of information in this series to help you achieve those goals. As a physician, we care about your weight or more specifically your BMI because obesity is linked to the development of diseases like hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, just to name a few. But if you are here because you physically want to look good, if that's your motivation, that's perfectly fine. I am not advocating a one-size-fits-all approach or solution. Each person will have to honestly evaluate their current health and level of fitness as well as their goals and implement the advice that I offer toward achieving those goals. Obviously, every tip that I offer will not pertain to everyone, so look to your goals and your starting point to decide which tips will be beneficial for you. In this first episode, we start with the basics, how and where to begin. To that end, I have compiled a list of six tips to help you achieve your best possible body and to help you become the healthiest that you have ever been. Get a physical exam. I know you don't want to, and I've heard all of the excuses. It takes too long to get an appointment. I don't want to wait in the waiting room. I have to get naked. I don't want to miss work, blah, blah, blah. You need to know the current state of your health. Is it just weight that you need to lose, or is there something more pressing that needs to be addressed? Tell your friends, your family, your co-workers, there are two reasons that you should do this. One, accountability. If everyone around you knows that you're trying to become more healthy, then it makes it harder for you to eat that piece of cake or that cookie or have two heaping servings of dinner. The second purpose is for support. It's easier to accomplish goals when you have people who are behind you who are cheering you on. Now, it's not easy. This is not easy. I'm not suggesting that but it is easier when you have a support system. Now, they may not be supportive and you have to prepare yourself for that, but hopefully, I hope for you, that you do find people who will be supportive. This one is going to be very difficult for a lot of you, so brace yourself. Stop drinking sodas. Now, when I say sodas, I do mean sodas like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, whatever it is that you drink that's carbonated. But in that category, I'm also including the sugary, calorie-laden, carb-laden coffee drinks. It's got to stop people. It is completely out of control and it is expanding your waistline and shrinking your wallet. This next one is going to be very difficult for a lot of you as well. Stop eating fast food. I know that it's super convenient and so cheap and there's a reason, but it's impossible to get healthy when you're eating this type of food regularly. Did you know that a Big Mac has 540 calories and 46 grams of carbs? That is insane. And a small fry, and we don't even get small fries, most of us, has 240 calories and 29 grams of carbs. 
the large fry, which is what most people get when they go to McDonald's, is 510 calories and 66 grams of carbs. That is insane. You can't lose weight. You can't be healthy if you're eating food like that. Now, this is not just limited to McDonald's. If you look at the menus of all of the other fast food places, you will find the same results. So if you're seriously committed to getting healthy, you have to cut them all out. Taco Bell, Wendy's, Sonic, Whataburger, gotta go. Use small plates. They help tremendously with portion control. This is a regular size dinner plate. And this is a, oh, oh, can you see it? This is a small plate. Now, obviously, if you decide to use small plates, do not heap the food up on top. That will just defeat the purpose. Pack your own lunch. Your coworkers are going to make fun of you, but who cares? You won't care when you're able to wear a bikini to the beach and post the photos on Instagram. So think of that when they're making fun of you. So packing your lunch, what does that do? One, it allows you to control what goes into your body. You get to choose the foods, you've prepared them so you know what's in them. You make healthier choices and you're controlling the portions. Also, you're going to save a ton of money because I know that eating out every day for lunch is super expensive. It doesn't seem expensive one meal at a time, but if you look back over the week, you will realize exactly how much money you've spent. And you will avoid the food coma that inevitably comes after you've eaten that heavy, calorie-laden lunch. Those are the six tips to help you start a healthy lifestyle. I do not recommend that you implement all of those changes at once. That's likely to be too overwhelming and may lead you to give up. Instead, choose one or two of them to implement at a time and keep in mind that it takes about 30 days to develop a habit. So be patient with yourself. That is it for this episode of Fit Tips. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. I would be curious to know which changes you're planning on making, so leave me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.